Sure. Uh, the question of the day. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. Perfect. So good morning, everyone. It's good to be uh, connected with the audience in Vietnam. Vietnam is one of my favorite places in whole of Asia. And personally, I also invest a lot of time working with Vietnamese customers and enabling them on HashiCorp stack. So today I'll be talking primarily about AWS Control Tower account factory for Terraform. And I'll be enabling you more towards the Terraform side. We also have follow-up sessions from AWS talking about AWS Control Tower account factory. And then we also have a demo uh, going forward. So to begin, uh, the first thing we want... Recording uh, in progress. Yeah, so to begin, first thing you would want to understand is where Terraform positions itself. So uh, Terraform is one of the most popular product out of the uh, HashiCorp stack. And one of the basic and most, uh, one of the basic underlying principle with Terraform is it helps you conceptualize your infrastructure as a code. So traditionally, there had been uh, very different hats. Uh, we've had uh, developers who would use uh, the software development processes to develop applications and they would generally work with code. And then we would have operations team uh, who, uh, you know, when it came to provisioning the infrastructure, they would use uh, a, they would use processes which were more towards on the manual side using scripts sometimes. And that's how infrastructure was traditionally managed. So from the new age concept around provisioning of infrastructure is conceptualizing infrastructure as code. And the idea behind whole of this process is to use a version control system where you have your where you place your code and you create reusable modules that can help you reduce the human error. So Terraform helps you do that. Terraform is uh, the leader in the space of infrastructure as code, and it helps you conceptualize all of your infrastructure in a codified manner. And once you've codified everything, it's also easy for you to automate it. So it helps you create automated workflows as well. And to ease the whole process, we also have a lot of providers that help you with the rapid creation of this. So for those of you uh, who are hearing about Terraform for the first time, or you have uh, no to minimal experience on Terraform. So in Terraform, you use a, a custom language to codify your infrastructure. The language is known as HCL, which stands for HashiCorp Configuration Language. So your end state in terms of what you want to have in your real world scenario, you will codify it and you will put it into your Terraform files. And from the Terraform files, uh, you know, a practitioner would typically go about, uh, you know, con uh, uh, creating these files where you are codifying your infrastructure. And then using that, uh, you can uh, actually deploy it in production. We also have a step of plan, which helps you uh, do a dry run on this. And after that, you can go ahead with apply, which actually goes about provisioning the infrastructure as stated in your files. There is additional concept of module registry, which we'll cover later in the session. So uh, now the question would be, why would I want to conceptualize my infrastructure as code? What's wrong about the traditional ways, right? So the whole idea behind this is to get all the benefits, uh, 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 get to basically extend all the benefits that have traditionally, uh, you know, stayed with the uh, softwares or the codified process. So if we look at the process of codification and uh, the benefit that it brings to infrastructure when we codify it, first and foremost, uh, you can create up, uh, you can create a versioning out of it, right? So you can take your uh, all of your files that you have, you can very well put them into a version control system of your choice. You can maintain different versions of it. You can promote the versions. You can uh, basically discard versions and you can just, you know, uh, use a, a pre previous version and so on. Second one would be around collaboration. By putting it into any version control system of your choice, second thing that you can go about doing is different people in your team can collaborate on the same set of files using the uh, different version control systems. 
And then you can also leverage the benefits of promotion. You can take the same code, you can promote it from one environment to another, like from dev to UAT to pre-prod and prod, so on. You can also have get the benefits of 4K. So when it comes to, <clears throat> so uh, then you can also use the benefits of forking. You can do things, you can do things like pull requests, you can fork it out uh, and so on. So to understand how uh, it all uh, kind of, you conceptualize this in the modern day world where the boundaries have kind of, uh, you know, um, blurred between uh, the two roles and we have a DevOps on the rise. So if you see now the workflow for both the software developer is same as the operations person and operations, per uh, and operations team rather has a new portfolio in them, which is more towards the automation engineer. So as a similar to when a dev software developer is writing the application code and pushing it to version control system from where it gets uh, pulled up by a delivery pipeline and the application is deployed, similar, exactly similar to that, now the automation engineers or DevOps engineers are writing, uh, they are basically, uh, you know, conceptualizing their infrastructure changes in form of a code using HCL configs. Using the very same process, they once uh, they uh, finish the development, they can push these changes onto a version control system. And from there, it's centrally, uh, you know, integrated with any application delivery pipeline. So you can either choose to integrate this with any app delivery pipeline of your choice, or you can very well leverage the HashiCorp Terraform uh, enterprise or cloud's native workflow. And instead, in this, what's happening is it's going about provisioning the infrastructure. And when we say infrastructure, it base, it's not just limited to the low-level infrastructure. Rather, you can do things uh, like, you know, low-level infrastructure. You can provision SaaS uh, tools using it. You can also uh, configure a lot of, you know, in, uh, PaaS tools also using this. So the, it offers a wide variety of end providers which can be configured easily using the whole process. So the benefits that it brings to the whole scenario is first of, uh, first of all, it increases the agility. We are creating an automation around the whole uh, process. So this reduces the manual effort drastically in the whole provisioning process. And you're creating a code that can be used multiple number of times as needed. So you can go about modifying the code or uh, uh, as per your changing needs and you can go about having the same code adapt to it. Second thing is when we automate the whole process, we also reduce risks uh, significantly in the process. So we reduce all of the uh, manual errors. Somebody follows, somebody, you know, uh, by mistake, you know, uh, forgetting to maybe uh, tick a check but a checkbox or something like that, right? So we can be rest assured, like, even uh, when you provision five accounts versus 10 accounts versus 100 accounts, they're all going to be uh, a standardized, right? So you minimize the manual effort, you minimize the error-prone work, and you create a reusable modules. Out, uh, reusable modules. Next thing is around costs as well. So by defining proper infrastructure footprints and modules, the teams can provision the infrastructure they need without wasteful and costly over provisioning. So you can also do mindful provisioning using this. So we talked about modules some time back, right? So to understand how module uh, what modules are and what module registry is. So the first and foremost challenge here is how do you store and share these configurations? We talked about creating reusable modules, right? Then how do you, where do you store them? How do you share these configurations? And then you might have a certain uh, modules which are public, uh, which are basic, which are not public, but rather private to your organization. So how do you share those modules with your peers? What are the best practices around it? How can you all collaborate on a, a single thing? So to address this challenge, we have module registry. So there are two kinds of module registry we expose. So first one is a public module registry. So if you've seen a, a registry.terraform.io, we have a lot of uh, providers uh, published inside the uh, in, uh, at registry.terraform.io. There are basically three kinds of providers there. First one is where the HashiCorp maintains the code. 
then there and then in some cases you would see a, a, a kind of providers and modules which are verified by us and their third one is basically community supported so you can go and check this out it offers a large community repository to store and share modules in easy to access and uh, distribute a manner so we have a built and published modules for general consumptions so all of your um, uh, leading use cases must already be there and at the moment we feature 5000 plus modules there so the second one is private module registry which actually addresses the concern around how do you share uh, your private modules inside an organization so for that in our enterprise offering in both terraform cloud and terraform enterprise we have private registry so there you can create modules that have been previously vetted by the provisioning team and you can publish it there so the modules can be created within individual organizations best practices and operational efficiency you can also have lot of built in controls into it like you can have appropriate tagging map to them you can uh, uh, you can set separate, uh, specific ttls and other security settings also and by having your modules published in this registry it makes it easy to share the modules between the organizations and then for even for the extended teams right for example developer teams who need a certain workflow to be provisioned if there is a ready hand uh, you know module available in the private registry so that can be easily uh, you know just consume from there so it can also help you in developing a provider consumer model inside your organization and it helps you also have introduced self serviceability for uh, your teams that are requesting the infrastructure so these are some of uh, the modules that may be uh, you can just have a look in terms of how the modules uh, you know may look like so basically it helps you create repeated patterns and then uh, what you want to uh, do you can just uh, do it uh, easily using the modules so this is more around aws control uh, tower account factory for terraform so we'll be discussing this uh, in details later but to understand this follows a in this we are following a hub and spoke model we have terraform uh, server at the center of it so all the terraform files again which are hcl files are pushed onto the terraform server and then it goes about provisioning the infrastructure in the aws so the output of this process is uh, a state file and uh, if somebody is not familiar about state file state file is basically uh the state of the real infrastructure that is maintained by terraform so it uses this state to understand what exists in production as of now and what the changes that are coming in are intending to do so it creates a diff between this and this and the result of diff is actually go uh, uh, you know provision into aws so there are more components to it and then i will have my follow uh, following speakers focus more around this component so i'll pass it on to the next speaker from aws uh, to talk us more about this uh, but if any of you want to reach me out the, the, uh, these are my coordinates here and feel free to you know reach out to me thank you thank you thank you nidhi uh, uh, so if you guys have any question please you know feel free to put in the q and a and then we will have the the q and a section and answer by the end of the um the the, the three presentation today uh, rất là cảm ơn nidhi và nếu như các anh chị mình có cái uh, cái phần mà câu hỏi thì mọi người uh, vui lòng đặt vào cái phần q and a hoặc là vào cái ô chat ha thì lúc đó là ban tổ chức sẽ thu thập lại và họ đưa gửi đến cho các speaker uh, và cái phần tiếp theo uh, không để mọi người chờ lâu đó là phần uh, chia sẻ của anh đại thì bên phía bậc anh đại ở đây uh, hôm nay anh đại sẽ chia sẻ về các lợi ích của AFT tức là AWS Control Tower Account Factory for Terraform uh, phần chia sẻ này của anh đại sẽ bằng được diễn ra bằng tiếng việt và vì cũng rất là sorry những các anh chị mà người nước ngoài thì cái phần mà chia sẻ của anh đại nếu như uh, các anh chị có câu hỏi nào thì mình có thể uh, sẽ 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 trao đổi với nhau về một cái buổi sâu hơn ha so over to you anh đại Okay, thanks V. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm um, 
First of all, uh, maybe I want to present uh, my session in Vietnamese because um, if uh, because we don't have time uh, to present in both uh, Vietnamese and English. But uh, at the end of the session, I will recap in English. Uh, yeah, uh, to summarize some key points, uh, key messages uh, for the session. Uh, ok uh, chào mọi người uh, trước mọi người có thấy cái cái uh, các anh chị có thấy cái màn hình người xe của mình chưa dạ rồi ạ ok cảm ơn rồi uh, trong các phần xét xanh này um, mình giới thiệu uh, cho các anh chị uh, cái lợi ích của cái việc chúng ta dùng cái phần terraform cho việc uh, customize và automate cái control tower uh, 